Good evening and welcome to tonight's episode of Sports Scene. I'm joined by these two gentlemen sitting beside me on both sides, uh, Elijah Lavette. Thanks for having me. And uh, Shane Soraya. Thank you, Dion. Thanks for having me on the show. Now, what do we have for the rundown tonight, Dion? On tonight's show, we will be talking about the CRU 7s, uh, the St. Joseph's Rugby Festival, as well as uh, Shane. I heard you caught up with uh, former Kumo Michael Ma. Yes, I did. Pretty oh. exciting story. Awesome, awesome stuff. But before we get into all those stories uh this weekend so two grand finals the mm. nrl grand final and the afl grand final now in the nrl grand final the broncos came up short with the cowboys were uh came away with the one point victory in golden point extra time now it was a thrilling match probably one of the best one of the best grand finals ever what are your thoughts on the game like just in itself like the excitement well, first of all, the grand final uh, it was the first time of both Queensland teams yes. out of uh, Queensland and actually hosted them um, on Sydney, Sydney. So to see the turnout of the crowd and everybody, you know, especially the home crowd traveling from Brisbane and North Queensland all the way up to, uh, to support their team, is, it's, it's a pretty good yeah, atmosphere out there. Yeah, history. And there was a history, it was all history last, yeah. last night with uh, both Queensland teams in the finals. Two both indigenous and captains. Two indigenous captains. Yeah. yeah, and um, the Cowboys, first made in premiership. Now, just talk a little bit about the game. The first half, evenly matched. Evenly matched, yeah. The, the, the Broncos scored first and then the Cowboys hit back. Man, it was, it was awesome. And then when the uh, Broncos caught up with the Cowboys with that um, penalty, I thought it was over, but in the dying minutes. Shane, as a Broncos supporter, what was going through your mind when Michael Morgan passed the ball for a try in the corner? 12 out, one to go. Tackle five, this is the last. It's bounced away to Thurston. Comes up Blair, got rid of Blair. Pushes away from McCulloch. Thurston gets the ball to Morgan. Morgan crosses the 20. Comes oh, away yeah. to O'Neill. Gets oh! the ball. It's a try! I actually didn't watch that part. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 thought, I thought Broncos uh, felt more comfortable at the second half. Mm -hmm. And they actually took a lot of time wasting the ball out. Uh, ben Hunt kicked um, like three or four kicks out of the sideline just to you know, pass the time. And um, mm -hmm. I think that was, that was a waste. And it cost them dearly in the end. So yeah. And what about that kick from Jonathan Thurston, the, one, the conversion to win the game? Oh, but he, he hit the crossbar. When there's, I don't know, but everyone at home, yes, last night, when I was at home watching the game, everyone was just, oh, they, they couldn't even sit down. Can do it? it looks yeah. to me as oh, it's oh. taken the steel work. <laughs> this is a horror movie. Wow. What else can this grand final provide? What a grand final it was, and um, congratulations to the Cowboys. Well-deserved win. Jonathan Thurston, an immortal. No one, nobody deserves it more than him, and um, yeah, congratulations to them. Thurston to choose from with Coat. He hits it, he's got it! He's got the field goal! He's got the premiership! He has gone from, as I said, a captain to a legend, and probably rugby league immortality. This way to <laughs> I have, I have, I have, I have nothing to say. My yeah. team lost. I'm so sure yeah. you don't. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, the AFL Grand Final saw Hawthorn, Hawthorn absolutely blitzed the yeah. West Coast Eagles. Started off uh, in a tight contest in the first uh, first quarter, but then in the, the third, in the in the third quarter, the third and fourth quarter, they just the Eagles just didn't have anything. Whereas the Hawks just went on and they absolutely blitzed them and blew them out of the park and uh, they came away okay. with the victory. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't actually watch that match but Dion did you did you manage to watch that? Yes, match? um this the mm -hmm. AFL game 
I, I actually, I thought it was going to be really a close one, like the NRL, I thought it was going to be similar to the NRL ones, but mm -hmm. it wasn't with uh, Hawthorne just yeah. proving to be too good. Yeah. Hawthorne now have won the third premiership so back to back. The first team in the 18 team competition to go back to back to back. They're three Peters. They are remarkable. Other teams have, that have done that is uh, Collingwood, and uh, Brisbane was the last team. And they they are the fifth. They're the fifth team, team to to do to yeah. win three back to back premierships. So uh, great stuff there in the AFL. Mm -hmm. So two awesome grand finals uh, over the weekend. So really exciting stuff. But we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with more sports. Here. Welcome back to the show. Now, over the weekend, also saw the CRU Sevens. Yeah, the Capital Rugby Union Sevens kicked off uh, last weekend on Saturday and Sunday at um, the New Look Bicini Sports Ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, the teams that took part, uh, no, uh, no, they're not new to the rugby rugby union. The Nova Crusaders, Defence University Spartans, McGregor Tarama in both uh, the men's and women's divisions. Yeah, so the CRU Sevens kick off uh, the Sevens tournament leading up to the National Provincial Sevens uh, this weekend. So there's something to look out for in the upcoming weekend. Yeah, it continues for the next two weeks, mm -hmm. weekends after the NPC. Mm -hmm. Also at Bicini on the uh, during the weekend was um, the Saint the Joseph's, Joseph's Rugby Festival. Yeah, so it's the third the third year for the program okay. to run. It's really good to see like programs such as the. Uh, rugby festival, you know, encourage students because rugby union is not so popular as, as rugby league. Yeah. So I reckon it's good to, you know, have a, a bit of yeah. change. <laughs> I think uh, the main aim is to like, teach teach the children basic skills and all that, and how to play rugby, rugby union and yeah. yeah. Because we're such a mad, uh, we love, Papua New Guineans love their rugby. I mean, learning it from an early age, like in mm -hmm. primary school, it really sets the momentum for, you know, mm -hmm. further developing. Yeah. And what do you think of the inclusion of the girls to uh, participate in uh, the uh, rugby, rugby union itself? I reckon everyone mm -hmm. should be given yeah. a shot and it's good to see that the uh, girls are actually taking part and um, we saw that a lot of girls took part over the weekend and uh, here's John Agovai with uh, more of the St. Joseph's Rugby Festival. annual rugby uh, festival. Uh, this is fourth year running. Uh, it is a culmination of uh, four weeks, uh, sorry, ten weeks of um, rugby skills uh, sessions during the PE classes. And then the, the, the end result of those uh, ten weeks is basically uh, having a full scale uh, rugby festival. Uh, we have the rugby festivals uh, in different levels. Uh, three levels. Green level is basically for just, uh, getting the little ones to know and build confidence in themselves. And so they basically play uh, touch, touch rugby. That's six years old to nine years old. And um, the next level would be the blue level, which is basically uh, applying some of the uh, uh, rugby union uh, skills. Uh, but most of them are not contested. For instance, wow, doing scrum uh, or the uh, lineouts, they are not contested. That okay, is uh, um, being performed by students. And then we get to the goal level, which is uh, 13 years old up to uh, 16 years old. They do seven side uh, full scale uh, rugby sevens competition, whereby those skills that have been uh, implemented are all being utilized. 
and then uh, not uh, uh, leaving our super senior students, particularly the grade 11 and 12, we engage them as super seniors, and they come on as uh, doing a full 15 uh, uh, rugby game. The girls play first, and then the boys. So usually after that, it's the whole idea is basically upskilling our rugby players, and not only for rugby, but also healthy lifestyle behaviors. Uh, we use uh, rugby as a, a mode in which we can be able to uh, introduce uh, to the students how to live healthy lifestyle as well. Um, the rugby festival basically was introduced to us by uh, Pacific Union program uh, led by um, Douglas uh, uh, guys and uh, Paul Joseph in 2012. And I'm glad that the two, uh, the two of them are coming again to help us uh, today in organizing the venues and referees for us also. We'd like to also acknowledge uh, the, Pacific, uh, sorry, the Rugby Union for assisting us in this area and also the parents. Parental support is extremely uh, high for us. And as you can see the venues and you see the teams that are on the field, they're fully attired in their own different colors. So this is what uh, our, our, our rugby festival where our parents put in a lot of effort. They uh, decided that they actually uh, requested us to have the rugby festival on a Saturday so that they will come and um, help as well. Awesome stuff there. We hope that other schools will yeah. um, have their rugby festivals as well, and uh, it's a really good program. Now we'll take a quick break and we'll be back with more of a sports scene when Shane catches up with former Kumon Michael Ma. Welcome back to the show. Now, Shane, you caught up with uh, former Kumul, Michael Mark. I did the uh, deal now. Michael Mark's former Kumul, and uh, he actually initiated the program of uh, starting a local league up in uh, the Sine Sine Yongomu district in Simbu province. Now, the competition itself has been running for over nine years now, but um, they've been playing it as an off season competition. But since Michael Mark and uh, some, uh, his president, uh, Benjamin, Benjamin, Mm -hmm. Yeah, they decided to, to form a form, form a, um, association. association and they got the club to affiliate under PNGRFL which is a major step forward for the competition itself. So they are affiliated now, to the PNGRFL? Yes, they did. So I did spoke to Mark about it and um, Mark expresses his, um, you know, as a Kumul, you know, coming out from retirement and dedicating his time to yeah, see the, the sport he loves yeah. dearly, rugby league, to grow. I mean, developing his homeland, Sine uh, Sine Yongumul. Now, the, the league itself has, has a proud history. They boast some of the local players which uh, represented Papua New Guinea and pull on the Kumus jersey, for instance, Stanley Gene, and uh, many more down the line. I couldn't make mention of the name, but yeah. Oh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mean, with a program such, such as this, um, this association, we probably have a couple more Kumuls that might come up through the ranks. Yeah, Elijah, what do you think? Yeah. So, um, I think it's pretty good that like a former Kumul has mm -hmm. gone back home, started up this um, association and, you know. Trying to develop yeah. a code in itself. Yeah, now mm -hmm. on that note, um, Sine Sine uh, Yongumul District and the league itself, uh, Sine Swai Rugby League Competition. Now they set an example for most of the competition around the uh, country, especially to, I mean, as a local local competition, you cannot, you cannot, they cannot scout um, direct, direct, I mean, raw, raw talent, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, raw talent from the local area to play in um, the, the prestigious Intercity Cup. Mm -hmm. So the step they're taking now to affiliate okay. under PNG RFL will help the, um, yeah, it will help the PNG RFL to actually scout some raw talent out of, mm -hmm. out of that. So I think it's a pretty good example for others out there in the country to actually see and follow. And Michael Mark and um, Benjamin are doing a wonderful job. As well as um, a lady, a lady got involved in that, uh, Wendy, Wendy Cohn. Now she's the, uh, women, she initiated the women's uh, rugby league here in the country. So the women's, also, the women's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. league up there is pretty big. Uh, of course, yes, of course. They have the women's league up there, but uh, the league itself, uh, Sinusoya Rugby League competition, they haven't uh, introduced the women's league in the okay. competition as yet. 
But uh, they do have plans to. They do have yeah. plans to. And this year, this year they will um, actually host the grand final. And I spoke to Mark. He came down here to purchase some of the silverware, uh, the gold medals, and the trophy and everything. So they will have a, a good competition and a grand final in the upcoming. Um, they say the second week of October. Okay. So it's a pretty good stuff. Yeah. So you caught so up with them, and um, mm -hmm. let's just take a look at um, the, uh, your story on mm -hmm. Michael Mark and the Sinisina Rugby League. The Sinisua Rugby League competition has a proud history of having fostered some of PNG's top rugby league players. The competition will now end this season on a high note, with more silverware up for grabs. The Sinisua Rugby League has been dormant in the recent years, but they have now managed to affiliate their local league competition under PNG RFL, which is seen as a major step forward for the competition itself. Although talented was still a place threat, but no got access and no got opportunity to overcome the town and expose them all the other. In the past, they used to have fights and cause disruption at their matches, but now people have changed and it is a positive sign. So when midla come lo yeh, most of midla come lo some la kan way na lo strong lo midla midla come lea too lo all la huge midla come lea lo pain mo all la sanin lo karin go back. But in time lo me me no so lo in la kan presentation lo same. Benjamin Kola, the SSI president, has been in the competition for nine years and has seen tremendous change this year and is very grateful of the government support. I bring the command up because since the league I'm dominating, I plan to come also command up now. Also, so one plus something when we look him also, also man, blow me blah pull up now. Some people got plan the business stuff. All in the looks out inside blow me blah. Why not make him all set? Kola also challenged the local leaders and educated villagers to come back and support the competition. Kohn was vocal on the competition, saying it's partly a way for the local talent to get exposed and be scouted to play in the major league in the country and ultimately pull the Kumul's jumper someday. Lots of talents out there in the rural areas. We had to we have to step out. We have to make pathways for them so they can come out now. Uh, same talent lot. The former Kumul said back in the early days he used to walk three hours from his village to the town just to play rugby league. But that has all changed a little over a decade later. PNG is fast evolving into a developed nation, even though the passion for rugby league is pretty much the same. We need them come up. But it's like I'm looking more than time for me to pour in them pins, pour in bar. Mark was invited several times to play in the prestigious Intercity Cup, but he humbly declined the invitation with one goal in mind: devote his time to his people and to the sport he loves. So me go be able to play me on him uh, uh, three weeks, uh, three months. I mean three months uh, program to me. Uh, me go take him three or four days to one on one club. Uh, so I'm back at the twelve the clubs. Wendy Cohen was one of the people who supported and initiated the idea of affiliating the Sinisoi Rugby League competition and the PNG RFL. Schoolboys programs and. Uh, uh, all the uh, pathways now only come inside lo, all competition room lo, trials do me plan then all talents blow now one one blow can come play skill yeah. as a coach and mentor mark sacrifices most of his time to develop his team and it all paid off to dominating plenty through he come to say ball name up come come john unaki um stanley gene last week saturday game you look him and uh, tubla Product Domi and play inside Narva play number two, uh, Justin Olam. Um, Lily Brother Blumi yet, and uh, Narva number 12, uh, Redley Brower. The Sinesuai brothers went on to make their debut appearance in the Highlands Zone trials and won all their matches, including the finals, ultimately to be crowned champions of the Highlands region. Yeah, awesome stuff there. Now, congratulations to the Asine Suai Rugby League competition on taking that initiative. And we wish you all the best in your up-and-coming grand final. And yeah, 
I uh, wish you a prosper uh, prosperous and a uh, successful competition next year. It will be good to see yeah. how how they'll be coming. Maybe you have to keep a tab on them and see how I they progress. Tab, of course, definitely. We'll be following you very closely and yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back with more of Sports Scene after these messages. Welcome back to the show. Now, uh, coming up on the 10th of October, which is on this this weekend. This weekend, coming up. Um, at is the Sir John Guy Stadium. The new look Sir John Guy Stadium. It's actually been hosting some pretty big events. Yeah, and another yes. big one that's coming up is the Melanesian Cup. Elijah. Yeah, the Melanesian Cup. Um, it's going to be the Agma Gurias, the winners of this year's Intercity Cup. They'll be playing the winner of Fiji's Vodafone Cup, which is... Well, the Sabeto Roosters. So yes. that's like their intercity cup. Yep. Okay. That's, like, that's their local competition local there in Fiji. So it's like, um, you know how, like this year, the Cowboys have won the NRL. Yeah. And you know how they Interest go over the, and yeah, they play England. Up, yeah, the Super League guys there. So that's what they're trying to do here in PNG and with PNG and Fiji. I so reckon yeah. that's really that's a really good stepping yeah, I reckon stone. This, that's a really good uh, stepping stone uh, to actually improve rugby league in the country as well as the Pacific region. Now Fiji, but these are no, I mean, yeah, Fiji are known for uh, rugby sevens, as, as especially union. union. Yeah. Yeah. But in rugby league, we don't we don't actually. But have no fair idea about uh, yeah. yeah. They, but they so did they're coming they, over here and play. Yeah. It will, will actually boost the level of competition here in the country as well. Yeah. And they did they did beat uh, the Batis did beat the Kumuls yeah. earlier on this year. So maybe we're hoping that PNG can get one back at the Fijians yeah. and take this one. So that's happening um, on the 10th of October, the, yeah. this weekend. I also, I reckon that it's, I was just reading through a bit about the, the uh, tournament itself and Sanders Saka, um, chairman for the PNG RFL, was saying that, you know, a lot of our players don't get that, um, a lot of the role players that play in uh, local competition don't have that exposure. Yeah, that opportunity to, to play. Yeah. So this is like playing on an international stage. And I, I reckon it's really good, and maybe other Melanesian countries should get involved, and we'll have a huge Melanesian Cup in yeah. the coming years. I reckon Cook Islands or New Caledonia yeah. probably should put a team in there. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and get it going. It'll be pretty yeah. interesting to see. Also, um, in the Rugby Union, uh, the Rugby World Cup's currently on right now, and uh, way, uh, England, England um, they've kind of made history, but not in a good way. They've um, the first ever host country who have never made it out of the pool games. They got absolutely thrashed and hammered and thrashed and hammered. They have beaten England at Twickenham in England's World Cup. You know, the fact that you know, the last 10 minutes of a game doesn't quite go your way, even the last five minutes of a game doesn't quite go your way and the result turns on its head, it doesn't change a thing. It doesn't, doesn't mean that a team suddenly you know, is, is no longer the team they were. In fact, actually, it just makes a bigger and better team as long as they do the work. And one thing this team does is they do their work. Ah, uh, it's really interesting. I, I'm tipping, who are you tipping for the finals? I'm tipping All Blacks, Wallabies as yeah, usual. Yeah, All Blacks, Wallabies. Okay, yeah, I'm tipping All Blacks too, but um, I think uh, the Springboks have a fair chance to make it the finals. Too, yeah, so I much. don't think the Springboks are doing too well, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that should bring us right to the end of our show. Thank you very much for your company. Um, all, you can follow us online at MTV Online and, and on Facebook. Um, if you have anything interesting, sporty that's happening uh, and you're friends with either, uh, either one of us, just let us know or go to Facebook and post on MTV Sports and uh, we'll be more than happy to cover that. Thanks, Elijah. Thanks. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Dio. You have a pleasant evening. Good night.